happy Thursday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. Uh, I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. I'm so happy uh, to see you guys pop in here. Uh, thanks again for joining me. All right, we are continuing on the alligator uh, embroidery we are doing the ABC stitch along so every letter of the alphabet we have a little animal for uh, we'll be working on it for two weeks of the month and then we'll be doing some other things the rest of the month so uh, we got the alligator done now it's time for the little birdies so thanks again for joining let's get going all right zooming you guys on down bear with me for a sec okay so we left off on uh, uh, just finishing the little alligator. Uh, so I'm happy about that. Uh, tonight I'd like to try and get done with these two little birdies or albatross. So it goes with the letter letter A still. Uh, all right, we have some satin stitching of the wings. Uh, here I have the wings outlined in blue, but I might just do them all like the satin stitch in black and see what that looks like without the blue outline. Um, we'll see. Uh, and then some satin stitch on the beak and uh, then, you know, back stitch for the rest of it here. So I think, I think I might do each individually because um, this guy's kind of floating by himself up here. I might want to do an away knot to get, to get that guy started. So uh, yeah. I think let's just go. Um, I'm gonna start with, I think his little legs here and his nose and we'll finish up this guy first. Well, actually, I don't know, maybe maybe we'll jump around uh, to this guy too, but I will cut my thread and I'll start a fresh thread, I think for, for this guy. Okay. Oh, and just uh, just because we, I wanted uh, um, to talk about a few things. We touched on a few things yesterday um that i wanted to talk about quick before i forgot so we talked about uh coloring our embroidery so here's an example of an embroidery that we colored uh before stitching so this is just done with colored pencils um i don't know if i did the greatest job here but it's cute still i think so we added just some um, some tint with some colored pencils and we talked about doing that for uh, next week's embroidery, which is the letter B. Uh, we're going in order. So it might be fun to get some colored pencils out and color in um, this guy a little bit, similar to how we did here. So that is us coloring in an embroidery beforehand. So that's what we were talking about yesterday. Uh, we also mentioned thread painting yesterday. I have a small example of that. Uh, silk shading or thread painting. I know some of you guys might remember this. Uh, this is one of the embroidery of the months from last year, I think. But if we look real close on um, some of these characters here, and, and even the text, we've like blended from one color to another. Like this one goes from pink to that peachy orange. Uh, just kind of filling in the shape and blending colors together. I think the, the um, peach here turned out really nice. So this is this is thread painting or um, silk shading. So that takes a long time. It is really fun though. Um, I had a great time working on this, but that's something we can maybe do with one of these guys. It would take a long time. <laughs> so maybe one that has like a little less to fill. Um, I'm not quite sure what one that would be, um, but we'll see as we go along. So that would be a neat option as well. And then someone asked uh, about our our little scissor sheaths when they were coming in, uh, they just came in like five minutes ago. <laughs> so uh, I'll get these listed, uh, relisted tomorrow. So if you want to be notified right when they, like automatically when they go live, like the moment I turn the button to, you know, a quantity amount, it'll automatically send you an email if you um, go to the listing and say, click the button that says notify me when available. So you'll you'll be the first to be emailed um, for like pick the color that you want, and then you'll know right away when it goes when it goes live the quantity. 
Um, I did get a few more this time, I th and I and I got one more color as well, like a dusty rose. I'm gonna snip the end of this, uh, so I'll have to take a photo of that one, and we'll stick that one up there, too. But I'll get the other ones up first uh, tomorrow. I need a needle. Oh, right here on our needle minder already. Oh, Patty says ordered my needle minder. Yay! We have a couple of them left. I am going to order, um, I want to make more. That was really fun to make our, our little needle minder there. Um, but yeah, we have, I think maybe seven or eight left now. Uh, we are doing, uh, we're going to be doing some hand embroidery here. So, all right, I'm going to weave in the end some, um, Aragon, that's, we're going to be doing hand embroidery. So I'm going to weave in the ends. We're going to be stitching his little legs next, the little, first little birdie's legs and beak. I'm using that goldenrod color again. This is the color of his, of his, of the, I almost said dragon. <laughs> I've been watching all the Harry Potter movies, so, uh, of the alligator's teeth. This is the same color as that. Oh, thanks, Darla. <laughs> I'm very excited about anything related to craft, that's for sure. Ooh, how should we do this? Should we do... Let's maybe do two big stitches. Like, instead of just a normal... You know, I could go the whole length of his his foot, his leg right away. That'd be kind of fun. But I'm thinking, why don't we do two big stitches? Then, then that middle is almost like where his knee would be. So it'll kind of look like... It'll kind of look like he's got little bendy knees. It's kind of fun. All right, I think I'm going to just jump over here. Do the other leg. So he's just resting on top of this alligator for the, for the evening. Okay, and then his beak is satin stitched as well. Ooh, this felt, oh, nope, I guess not. Felt like I had a little knot going, but I think we're fine. All right, for his beak, so I'm going to start on one side and go all the way to the other, and then go back to the original side and go all the way to the other side again, just uh, for the satin stitch. And I think I'm going to go the full length of the beak. That'll be, I think, the easiest way to way to do it, so... That's kind of the bottom of his beak there. Then I'm coming all the way back. I'm just going to be following that outer line. Hee <laughs> cute. All right, so I need, I think, probably one more in here. There. That'll do, I think. I don't know. Should I jump up here? I think I have enough thread to start in a way not again. Um, I'll, I'll explain all that again. So I'm going to weave in the ends here. It's not much to weave in, but we'll be fine. This will be kind of like tying a little, little knot here. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to stitch this second bird um, without jumping to it. So if I jump to the next bird, you'll see that line behind my fabric. So I'm going to do it in a way where I just start fresh, but I still want to weave in my ends. We're not going to have too much to weave in. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll actually wait to start him after we have a few stitches in there, but, um, I'm going to, well, we'll just go, we'll just go for it since I have this color threaded already. I'm going to stitch that guy oh, still weaving in the ends, not tying knots on the back. And um, yeah, then I won't have any like weird jumps that you can see. So all right, I'm going to start from the front. I'm going to start like four inches away from where I'm going to start. And actually, I think I'm going to go down here. So I know this is going to look weird, but we're, we're making a temporary knot. Uh, to temporarily hold a piece of floss that we will weave in once we have some stitches to weave them in. So um, I tied a knot on the front, and now I'm going to just start stitching his beak like normal, like how I did on the other one. 
and you'll see we've we've got this big stitch on the back. We'll trim that later and and weave that in. And again, the only reason I'm doing this is because then I won't have any like you can see that you can see that through the back. I didn't want to like jump from this bird to that bird so you could see that. I did kind of jump across this guy's body already, but I might be able to hide that when I um, stitch the outline. We'll see. I'm being a little picky tonight. I, I'm feeling, um, usually I'm like, okay, I'm, my goal is just to make it 80% good. Like, <laughs> just, uh, you know, if perfection comes up, then that, then things are hard to finish and then it gets frustrating and all that. So I, I, tr I always go like on the mantra, okay, I'm just going to make it 80% good. And then it's easier to just get past small imperfections. But I can feel that bubbling up already that I want to deal with the imperfections. So it might be one of those nights. All right, that's all there is to this. So now I'm going to weave in this end. Again, there's not much to weave in right now. And actually, I might wait uh, to weave in this away knot till I have some more stitches here. But for now, I'm going to... Eh, or not. Maybe I'll just do it. Just going to do it. That's just was wanting to be perfect again by waiting I guess but all right trimming that so now we can actually snip away that away knot there don't need that and that has released that little piece of thread and now I can weave that in as well and now I don't have any of those jumps on the back of my piece like getting up to this bird oh Marcia says I try to tell myself that done is better than perfect yep exactly yeah I like the whole like the problem with perfectionism is it can stop you from starting and it can stop you from finishing <laughs> it can stop you from making decisions and and stuff and it's just you know, can make you just feel uncomfortable, like, am I doing it right, and all that stuff, too, so I figure shooting for that 80%, all of a sudden, all of those kind of parameters go away, like, eh, I, it only has to be 80% good, I'll just get started, doesn't have to, I don't have to know everything beforehand, it doesn't have to be perfect, and then, uh, um, same thing with, like, working on it and finishing it, like, eh, that little mistake doesn't matter, it only has to be 80% good, <laughs> All right, uh, let's do, I think let's do the black satin stitch next. Ooh, and I already have, ooh, this is just a little piece of thread. I think this will get me pretty far, though. Yeah, this is a scrap from doing these eyes down here, so I think I'll just use this, see how far this will get us with all the satin stitching. Maybe I'll start with this bird up here, too. All right, so I'm gonna weave in uh, to the backs of these um, uh, beak stitches, but I think I am gonna just jump. I'll do his eye right away. Then I'll do uh, the satin stitch of this wing, then the satin stitch of this wing, and I'm guessing we'll be out of thread by then, and then we'll have to start fresh for, for this guy down there. All right, that's my plan. Always like a little, little plan um, going in. I think there's enough bulk here now in this beak that we'll be able to weave this in just fine. Oh, almost lost the thread already. Sheesh. Oh yeah, Sharon says by not making it perfect, it makes it unique. Yep. Love that. I'm going to say that in my head from now on too. That's, that's good. All right, I'm going to do a little hexagon for the eye. I think that gives that roundish effect. These little baby stitches. Hey, Amy, happy Thursday. Oops, and I lost the thread already. Whenever my thread gets this length, I say this every time, and I do it every time. I don't know why I keep doing it, but like every time it's about this length, I accidentally pull the needle off of it. I don't know what it is. I think it's just like I'm farther than I'm, than I think I am, <laughs> so I keep pulling, and we're already that far with our thread. So little stitches for his eye. 
I think satin stitching the wings will be fun though. I think I am going to just try, I, in the design I have the, the wings outlined with the blue after satin stitching, but sometimes I don't like outlining satin stitch. I think satin stitch looks nice when it's just like floating by itself. Um, so I think I might do that for this. All right, so now this, this wing, I'm going to put in a few, um, what did we call it again? We had a funny name for it the other day, but like some, some guide posts, I guess. So I think I'm gonna start like kind of in the middle here and just kind of go directly across. I'm gonna go with the wing. I mean, I could go horizontal if I wanted to, or I could go more vertical, but I'm gonna go kind of like the direction that the wing is pointing a little bit, I think. Or maybe I'll, yeah, I think, I don't know, right there I think is maybe good. So I'm gonna go directly across. Any, any direction you go really is gonna be fine. It's just about starting on the one side and then going to the other. So, all right, let's, let's do that. So I went from the bottom to the top. So now I'm going to go from, I'm going to go towards the left and then I'll come back up. Uh, all right, I'll come back to the other side and do the, do the right side. And ooh, now that I'm only have this much thread left, I'm wondering if I will have enough for this guy. There we go. And around his head at the bottom of the wing here too, we'll stitch the blue so that can hide some of our some of our edges are a little bit weird yeah I think that's enough for that side so I'm going to come back up come back um, over to the right side all right now down here I think I probably only need one more like I don't think this one's going to go all the way up to the top I think it's just going to go like right there Yeah, and then the tip will come back to the top for the maybe two stitches for the tip of his wing here. Just filling in that shape. There. I think that, that does it. Uh, he might need one more. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to jump down and do one more stitch right here on the side. I think he needs one more. Eh, not sure if that was a good idea, but going with it now. All right, let's, uh, I think I may have just enough thread for this second side, and I think I'll just go kind of with the wing again. I'm going to start, this seems like a nice straight line, and then I can get to like a smaller triangle as I go down, so I think that's, that's my plan. Now I'm thinking I should have gone with the longer piece of thread. Ugh. It's annoying to start a satin stitch right in the middle of, um, right in the middle of it. We'll see. These stitches will get smaller and smaller, so maybe it'll work. Oh, yours is looking like it's missing some lines. You can go back um, in the middle of your satin stitch. Um, like if, if there's like a hole in between the satin stitches, you can go and do another, another little stitch there to just bulk it up, bulk the lines up. Hey, Cheryl. Oh, that's a great idea. Amy says, I like to outline... Um, like around a satin stitch first and then use it as a guide to where the needle goes in. That's actually, I think the traditional way to do satin stitch is outlining it first. And that's kind of what we did with our thread painting thing. So outlining it first and then stitching like over the top of your outline, it actually adds more padding to a satin stitch as well. So that's a really nice look. We should play around with um, satin stitch sometime. Just um, do a bunch of different ways of doing satin stitch. Oh my God, I really, Barely have enough thread, but I only have like this this tiny little thing to fill. I just wanna, I just wanna use, see if I can use this thread. I, I still need enough to weave it in though. I think we'll just have exactly the amount. So this is just a couple teeny tiny stitches to get the effect of it coming to a point there. I think maybe one more. There we go. 
plenty good, perfect, and uh, I think I have just the right amount left to weave in the ends. Whew, that's a close one. And then that was like a scrap piece of black too, so that's great. I'm just trying to grab different threads each time. It's not always the easiest, but I think we got it. All right, let's snip. Boop. Okay, so last up with him. Well, I suppose, well, I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's do the black on this guy first. All right, so now here's the actual second half of the thread from last night. Um, so this is when we did the eyes on the alligator and we had to split our thread. This is the second, second set of three strands here. Um, all right, let's grab that needle again. And I'm gonna get his eye and then I think I'll jump down and we'll do the wing. So I'll weave into um, the beak if I can. Whoa, stuck on my shirt. There we go. There, the weaving in is kind of like tying a little knot. Do the little hexagon again for the eye. So happy those uh, scissors sheaths came. I was wondering about those, and then um, then uh, I forget who brought it up last night. I'm like, yeah, where are those? And I, I checked the tracking uh, right before I came on here. And it said delivered, and I'm like, what? They were not delivered. <laughs> and then I looked outside, and they were outside. So <laughs> it was a, a late mail coming. Someone snuck up on the door and delivered it. You know what? I think I'm going to just rotate my whole piece just so it's a little bit more comfortable in my hand. And uh, there we go. And then we'll stitch. I don't know. What direction should we stitch his wing in? We could go, uh, we could go like in this direction, stitches like that. Or we could go like the long length again. That's kind of like kind of what we did here. Maybe we should stick with that. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. So I'm going to say that um, this little shoulder area is going to be the bottom. And I'm going to just kind of, this will be like my guide post stitch. And that's the angle I'm going to go for for the rest of it. So let's, let's do this side first. I think it's going to be easier. So I'm just trying to go at that same angle, but always starting on the same side. If we do carry a dark color, can we just wrap a lighter, wrap it a lighter thread so it won't show? Oh, Justin, that I've never thought about that before. Um, you you would still sort of I guess physically be able to see um the thread, but I mean theoretically you could wrap it in a lighter color, and potentially you'd be able to see it less. That might be a lot of work to do that, if I'm understanding you you correctly. Ultimately, I think when it's sewn into a quilt or with whatever you're you're making, it's going to be not a focus and not a thing that anyone's going to be paying attention to anyway. Um, but yeah, theoretically, I would think you could lighten it somehow. Perfect. 
probably be easier to try and avoid doing, <laughs> having to deal with that. But, I mean, you know, I jumped around in here, just little bits, and... And the other thing is, too, like, right now I'm holding it up, and when you're working on it, you know, you'll be holding it up so the light passes through it so you can see all those lines, but once this is sewn into something and it's flat against something, it, it becomes less of an issue because there's no light coming through it, like, making it into a shadow or anything either. So ultimately, it's probably not a going to be the end of the world. Sorry, I'm getting the little bitty tips of the wing here. Maybe I should have gone the other direction, but I think this is working too. It'll work in any direction. There. There, he's kind of cute. All right, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave it without the outline. So you can see here there is actually a blue outline around the wings there. And you can see it in the example piece with the stitching of the blue around the wing. But I think I like it without. I'm going to keep it without. Um, yeah, and then I'm just going to go with the blue outline for everything else. I think that'll be kind of nice. We'll see. So I guess I'm done with the black. Let's weave in this thread, and uh, all that's left is the blue. Oh, I guess overall all that's left is the blue, because the letter A, um, at least in, in this design, I have with the blue. And like I said, or like I've been saying like over the past couple of days, you know, this one I'm staying pretty close to the original, but all these other ones, I mean, we can play with the rest of the alphabet. And I mean, some we might want to do just as is. Other ones we can play around like, uh, you know, like we're going to do with the butterfly next week. I think I would like to add some of that, um, just like coloring, coloring in the shape. So again, next week will be the letter B. Uh, we're going to go in alphabetical order, but I think I, I'm going to get my colored pencils out and it'd be really fun to like color, color it in a little bit before stitching. Um, I can go over that, that process that came up yesterday and I hadn't thought about that in a while and sounded like fun and that's what we're here for. <laughs> this is supposed to be relaxing and fun and a nice chill thing to do at the end of the day, right? So might as well uh, add in all that fun stuff. So, all right. So the blue, if you guys are stitching it um, the same as me, the blue I'm using is the denim wash blue. Um, and yeah, that'll be for the birds and the letters. But, you know, feel free to use whatever color you want to. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the butterfly uh, bent vegan. Fun. All right, I'm getting my, uh, what's it, like 24 inches or so. Okay, let's get our, oh man, I got fuzzles everywhere. Let's grab those. I'm going to um, get my uh, three strands. So I'm separating each strand one at a time again. Zoop. Two, choop, and three. Lost a grip on it. There we go. So we have our three on this side still. And we'll just gather these three here. Needle. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, it's probably on the back still. Oh, it's not! What did I do with my needle? Did I totally just set it somewhere? That's always fun. <sighs> oh, right here. Oh, it's still attached to to the um, <laughs> the black thread. I'm getting used to, to using my needle minder more. And uh, clearly, I am not... It's not a total um, without thinking thing for me yet. It's not completely ingrained in my hands yet if I just set down my needle somewhere still. Ugh, that was a d disaster averted. <laughs> All right, um, let's let's just start with this dude down here that we just finished on. He he seems like the easier easier one for no particular reason. They're both equally fine, I guess. I gotta choose something, so 
made a quick decision. We're doing this blue, this guy down here. Okay. Where did I end up? Oh, at the tip of the wing. So, all right, I'll start the back stitch here and we'll just end up on the other side of his body. I like these little guys, they're kind of fun. These guys would be cute little pins or something too. <laughs> So now I'm just doing the back stitch. I was thinking we didn't do any back stitch yet, but we did the legs and the eyes were, were also back stitch. Hey, Deborah. Oh, I think you wrote that a little while ago. <laughs> I just saw it though. It has been a little bit easier for me to look up at comments while while doing the embroidery. Um, what were we doing the other day that it was, maybe it was the tatting, something that I, I had a hard time glancing up, hard time reading. But embroidery, I can look up a whole lot more. little seagulls. There's seagulls at my parents' house. Um, there's pelicans there now too and there is never like growing up um, they live on a lake and, and my grandpa lives on the same lake and I don't ever remember pelicans growing up. I think those have just been there in the past few years which is so weird. Now it's just a pile of ice. <laughs> so we'll be, um, John and I will be visiting them, I think, next weekend. So next weekend, uh, uh, there may be a little bit of um, some lake content streaming from, the, from my parents' house. So that'll be fun. It's ice fishing season. So people are driving with trucks two miles out onto frozen water. Oh my god, it's just so crazy. It scares me. All right, I think we'll come back up in this stitch and do a forward stitch just so I can place this last stitch just right. There we go. I think that's cute without outlining it too. I think it's fun both ways, but... I eh, thought I'd try something different. So, all right, there's that one. I'm going to finish up that end versus, again, jumping to the next bird. So I'm going to just uh, weave in the end, and then I'm just going to take the same thread, weave plenty, theoretically, um, and then we'll weave into the bird up there. And I think I'll just, I won't even flip it around. We'll just start weaving in. <laughs> Ben Vegan uh, Trucker says, I think that's why ice fishing is more of a man sport. Women are smarter than that. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> oh, man. We might uh, snowshoe out a little bit, but I don't know. The idea of being in a huge vehicle and just the whole thing of like, okay, uh, we're getting on the ice now with our giant truck. Make sure to open the windows and uh, unbuckle. Uh, so you don't freaking, like, so when, like, if you fall through the ice, then you can at least swim out through the window. Like, that's not logic I want to play around with. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not what I want. Oh. oh, I came out towards the top. So I think we'll start, we'll go counterclockwise around this guy. But yeah, so we'll we'll go out and look, but man, I just And the thing is too, it's it's a big lake, so it um you can get turned around and and blinded like because it's so bright uh with all the snow. And if there's blowing snow, I mean, you might not be able to see where you're driving even. It's just scary. And people fall in every year, like I don't know. It's not going to be me though. <laughs> 
attitude. But it is neat and interesting, and I'm sure it's fun. And But yeah, I don't know. I can view from afar, and that's fine. Or walk out. I can walk out with my feet. <laughs> Keep my eyes open and off a 2,000-pound vehicle. That's fine with me. Good enough experience for me. It is fun to watch, though. Um, they, they have um, it's for sturgeon fishing, so which are dinosaurs, basically. Um, I mean, some of these fish are hundred plus years old, which is crazy town. It's just it's all just so crazy. But we've watched them saw. Uh, um, the ice like a giant hole in the ice and these these saws are like five feet long these like giant chainsaws and they're just cutting into two feet of ice crazy it's just it's fascinating but crazy <laughs> oh heck yeah so bent vegan trucker says i can stay in a nice warm house with a hot cup of tea and some needlework or a book mm -hmm, that's fine that's vacation to me that sounds like the nicest vacation like i don't need a beach i don't need anything it can be cold outside but if i got my like a nice blankie and yeah like uh tea or coffee and yep just chilling with a book or yeah exactly any any yarn craft thread craft related craft Ugh, I could have a week of that, and uh, man, I would be just like the most recovered person <laughs> ever, I think. That sounds just lovely. A walk here and there, and that's, that sounds nice. Oh, I got the needle miter out, yep! Oh, penguin and fish needle minder. This is our first needle minder, but I'm definitely going to make more. It's just, I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out and it was fun. I want to do some smaller ones too. Like, I mean, this one's, this one's a nice big size, which I like too. Um, but it'll be fun to play with different sizes and different little drawings. Oh, funny. Uh, Justin says, I use the magnetic edges of my iPad as a needle minder. That's funny that you say that, because, like, whenever I lose a needle, because sometimes I have my iPad around here, whenever I lose a needle or or something, I, I check that first, too. That's funny. Oh, hey, Sylvia. Happy to see you pop in. Yeah, alligator's done, and this is the last stitch of the birds. Oh, heck, it's only, uh... It's only uh, nine, no, eight here, so um, I think we'll actually get a big start on these letters. That's awesome. I wasn't expecting to get that far. So great. This guy's done. I'm going to weave in the end here. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself because I said, I said, <laughs> ah, heck, <laughs> like twice already. And I just got off a phone call with a bunch of... Wisconsiners, so I, uh, <laughs> I think that's, it's bleeding out of me a little bit. But the first time I said it, I'm like, oh man, that was weird to say. <laughs> the second time I said it, I'm like, okay, that's, that's the evening we're in, I guess. All right. I'm going to save this little piece of blue because, I mean, we had about this much for, well, actually a little bit more for some of this black, but this is, this will, you know, I'm, this will be saved. This is enough to stitch something for a different one of these, um, one of these designs. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, alligator and the two birds, uh, albatrosses or albatrosses trossi or whatever the albatross is probably the plural of albatross i don't know um all right so anyway let's take a look at these letters i'm just going to kind of pull the fabric a little bit they were looking a little distorted but now they're looking okay so i'm going to stitch these in a satin stitch 
uh, just like how I did the uh, original. But you can see I did, uh, there's like some, some things we gotta attend to, right? Like, um, so here, let's, let's draw this on paper, I think, for a sec. Let's get my little notepad out. Where'd he go? It's definitely clean my table uh, time. Usually, by the end of the week, my craft table here gets crazy. So we have um, the letter A. So let's just start there. I mean, there's a few ways that we could... I mean, there's lots of ways, but there's a few ways we could deal with... Um, oops, sorry. Deal with, like, the satin stitch. Like, we could just... We could just go all the way across. So I could just go all the way across here. Like, you know, if we went horizontal. I mean, that'd look okay. I mean, that'd look totally fine. Um, uh, we could go, you know, vertical. Uh, what we did in the original, which I think is kind of fun, is I mapped it... out a little bit like where I extended this line here and I extended this line here and then I just did it looks like I just did horizontal just along that line oh and I did vertical along this line I'm just looking at it like exactly what I did and then I did horizontal again but because I divided up the shape we got like kind of a fun um lined effect here which uh, and we did the same thing here we just kind of cut the shape down which is kind of fun it gave it a little almost like like calligraphy like one swoop um, and then the next swoop versus uh, completely filled in but now I wonder like I wonder what would it, it would look like if we just completely uh, filled it in straight like you know this too like instead of arching around and um, we just went straight but I don't know. You know what? I think maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it um, like how I did here, just so so we can just um, do something just a little bit different, and um, I can help you guys. Like if you wanted to go around a curve like this with satin stitch, we haven't really done that really. So um, maybe we'll do it that way, just to like get the same same look. But that's something that you might want to think about. Like as as we're going through all of these letters, like you really can do a bunch of different ways of doing it. So I think for this first one, I'll I'll do that like third way where I divide up the spaces. Um, it's probably the most advanced way, maybe as far as because you just have to think a little bit more of how you want to divide up the shape. But um, th with this design, we've kind of been sticking to the original. So. Um, I think we'll just do it the same way. So what I'm going to do is just with my pencil here, I'm going to just kind of extend that line. I'm going to draw in um, the lines here, like where I want to divide it. And I'm going to just put a marking that I, you know, you can even, I'm going to put in like my little guidepost stitches again, but I can just put little reminders with this. I think this one I'm going to go vertical. So I'll put little vertical reminders and this I'm going to stay horizontal. Um, or it's just like, yeah, horizontal to the baseline. And then here, let's color in this at the same time. So I, I'm going to have this come down. And now here, I'd like to go around the curve. So, um, you know, straight up the middle here. And then by the time we get here, we're kind of at an angle like that. And same here. And then we end up horizontal. So we probably end up horizontal about right there. And then the rest of this is horizontal. And then I'd say probably right in the middle here is horizontal. Angled around the curves. And then we end up kind of vertical. So I think that's what I'm going to attempt here. So feel free to draw in your guides. That is totally fine. I love just a, just a little pencil like this. You're going to cover it up. Um, I think that'll this is going to work great. Again, I could have just gone all the way across and just filled it in. That would have been fine, too. But it is kind of fun, I think, thinking about it a little bit um, like this. 
so I'm going to just take uh, the second half of our thread here and we'll do a little bit. So we won't finish this all tonight, uh, but it'd be nice to like, maybe we can get like one of these guideposts or one of these um, uh, big lines. I used to know all the typography uh, <laughs> vocabulary from school, but now I don't remember. Uh, but that like downstroke over here. Oh, and I think I will start with an away knot again, since I don't have like really anything nearby to weave, uh, weave my stitches into. So let's start with another away knot. I'm thinking about this a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to start with this line here. And I'm going to start at the top. I don't know why. So let's go about the four inches or three to four inches away from where I want to start stitching. Let's go right there. Okay, ooh, and I, I'm gonna get, make my thread a little bit shorter. There we are. Okay, so I'm gonna start just right on the top here. And you know what? I think I am gonna put like little guide posts along the way. So actually we might end up starting at the bottom because I'm putting in my guide posts starting at the top, but that's fine. Um, I'm really gonna be, uh, trying to be good at going like just over the edge of the line because I do want these lines covered up. All right, so I'm going to just uh, pop down just a little bit further. And what I'm doing is I'm actually holding my thread uh, to make sure that it's parallel to the stitch I already put in. And then I'm going to go like in that spot. There we go, that looks good. So these are just little guide posts that are gonna help us. They don't have to be, you know, any certain distance across, just whatever feels comfortable. Uh, but these, this is gonna help, help me. Um, then I can just fill in the shapes and it'll be easier to eyeball um, that I'm not like veering off or something. I mean, it, with this, we do wanna like veer off, uh, but, but these straight sides, we don't. So here, I'm gonna just jump down a little further. We'll get this kind of one that I already have drawn in. Oh, Amy says every time I hang out with family in Vermont, I, I end sentences with, you know. <laughs> yep, that's funny. Yep, gotta start saying like, don't you know, and you guys, and um, what else? Uh, these two tree things here. Work on uh, work on those. <laughs> yeah, I got two tree pro projects to work on while I'm while I'm gone. <laughs> that's that's one. All right, now I'm getting all the way to the bottom. Ah, yeah, that's. That's one that's in the family. Oh, mom said one. Mom's over on TikTok. She said, you betcha. <laughs> yep, that's that's one. You betcha. <laughs> All right, so I got kind of my guideposts here. Um, I'm going to just crawl up the side now. And what I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to always start, you know, you might have noticed I'm always starting on the left side and I'm going to the right side. I'm going to keep, keep doing that. Oh, <laughs> Ben Vegan Trucker says, back when I drove to Canada, I would end the sentences in A a lot. A? <laughs> yeah, I'm in Minnesota now, so we, we have a little bit of that, a little bit of that here, too. All right, for the satin stitch, I'm always starting on the same side. So I'm always going to start, in this case, on the left and end up on the right. Um, ooh, almost dropped my needle. And I'm just going a tiny bit away from the last stitch. If it looks like it's starting like the buckle, like I'm cramming too many spaces in or too many stitches in one space or one like area, then I'll just, um, the next stitch, I'll try and go a little further apart. And I'm just little by little kind of gauging, is it straight? And did I leave any holes? And, and just correcting as I go. But right now my goal is to get to this next line. So I'm just going in between the lines and trying to keep it straight in between those. It's ya, yeah, ya betcha. Ya, yeah, ya betcha. Yeah, like 
I could, I think I can, like, I'm probably fine from here to there, but I think I can fit one more in there. So I'm going to just get one more line in there. All right, we're on the next little bit. And if you feel like you need another guide post, another guideline in, just, just put one in and then go back to where you were. But I'm always kind of like looking close at what I'm doing and then looking far away too. Because if you like look at your whole piece, then you can be like, oh yeah, I guess I'm not as parallel anymore. Um, versus, you know, if I'm looking super close, I'm like, okay, am I, ne I'm, am I close enough to the last stitch? And, you know, so just, it's an act of like, see the hole and then like looking really close and making any adjustments um i feel like i'm a little angled here but that's way in perfection land oh for funny yes <laughs> oh for fun that's oh oh for fun yeah I, I hear that one a lot i probably say it a lot oh for fun Oh, for fun. <laughs> oh my god, sometimes you just don't think of it until it's pointed out either. Oh, that's funny. Gina says, so what does A mean? Like, that, uh, you're looking pretty good there, eh? <laughs> I don't know. Would that would that be a appropriate use? I think it's like it's it's I think it can be replaced with don't you know <laughs> probably. Like don't you think? Or would you agree? Something like that. And then there's the like yeah no yeah and the yeah no's and <laughs> that whole scenario too which is always funny which if you know it you it makes perfect sense oh so okay yeah uh bent vegan says it would be appropriate user um i'm going to tim hortons eh i think that kind of means like oh you want to come oh yeah <laughs> that would work yeah, it's that in that case it's like posing the question. That's funny. The appropriate answer to that, like uh, hey, we're going going to Tim Hortons, eh? Would be yeah, no yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's funny. Oh, Cheryl says I'm in Canada. So you got the skinny on the A. All right, I am running out of thread here. I do not think I'm going to make it all the way to the top. So I think we'll we'll go either to the top or when we run out of thread. Uh, I guess when we run out of thread, we'll, we'll stop for the evening. <laughs> Norwegians are fabulous. Lots of Norwegians in Minnesota, for sure. All right, I got a little crooked here, but because I have this guide post thing, that's going to kind of like correct me for the rest of them. So I'm going to put just put one more in. Yeah, the guide posts are really going to be what keeps this looking straight. Definitely recommend um, putting those in. And I put a bunch in and I think um, that's been that was helpful. 
Ooh, we might just get to the top here. That that'd be perfect. We might have just enough glass. Oh, Gina says the other day I noticed you said all y'all, which is very southern. Yeah, I, I don't know where I picked that up. I think I might have picked that up in college. I think I just picked it up because I'm like, this is fun to say, all y'all. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's really a Wisconsin thing. I think I think I heard it once and I'm like, and said it once and I'm like, that's just fun to say. It feels good. <laughs> all y'all. Uh, and... I think that just put it in my repertoire. <laughs> All right, I'm totally going to force these last stitches to be enough here. I think I have just enough floss. Oh, and then we'll weave in that other our, our, our way not floss here. Is that enough? Or do I need one more? Uh, I think we're, I think we're okay there. I think that's looking pretty good. All right, let's switch this or flip it. I mean, um, and we'll weave in the ends here. Satin stitch is fun because it, Looks nice on the back too. It does give us a lot of floss. That's okay. All right, this is my away knot. I'm gonna just snip it from this side. There we go. And let's weave that end in. I think we got pretty dang far today. So tomorrow we'll finish this the these other two A's um, quickly, I think. Well, I don't know, relatively quickly. It's still satin stitch. It'll still take some time. Oh, shoot. Um, but yeah, I think we'll get there. So we'll see how much time is left after that. And um, I don't know, maybe we'll do something else for a few minutes. Um, I do wanna, if we get things done, these done early, like in the in the coming months, I do want to work, start working on doing the quilt as you go process. Oh, I don't have enough thread to turn around, so I'm just gonna go with the needle or the eye of the needle, first, for my last bit. But yeah, so I would like to put any extra time we end up having into making it into a quilt. But for this first one, I don't have like all the fabric or any of that stuff ready quite yet. So I think we'll. Um, We'll just do something else a little bit, but I will, um, I'm definitely hoping, oh, here's that away knot, that time can be spent on, like, the quilting of it a little bit. All right, here's where we left off. Oh, Robin, thank you so much. Robin said I ordered the embroidery of the month. Oh, yeah, so that will be stitching. That's perfect timing, so it'll, you should have it before um, we get started. So next week, you know, we still have tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll finish this whole guy up. Uh, letter A, alligator, you know, theoretically, depending we don't have any weird technical difficulties, um, we'll get this guy done. I mean, we already plotted him out already and already have a little bit done. And then next week, um, we'll be working on the letter B. So we're going to go in order. So next week will be the letter B. And I think we will do some of that uh, coloring, that fabric coloring beforehand, like what we did with this piece, um, using colored pencils. You can use any colored pencils. You can even use crayons. Um, so whatever you got laying around uh, for for that will, will work. And um, so we could do that. And uh, then we'll stitch that. Uh, last minute, so you, you could change up the quilt material colors. Oh wait, if you if you just worked on these and had a few of them ready and putting them together quilt. Oh, last minute. Yeah, you could totally change the quilt material colors, you know, for yeah, colors based on gender if you wanted to do that, for sure. Yeah, that's what's nice. So, um how we're going to do it is I'm going to do this in, in a quilt as you go method. So, what that means is we'll have we'll have this as a square. And then I'll have a piece of batting. I'm going to just use small little pieces of batting. So like a 10 inch piece of batting. And then I'll get a, 
a back fabric. I'll choose like what I want for the back and that will be a back fabric. Then we'll actually quilt, um, we'll quilt this piece on its own. So we'll actually quilt it before we put it in the whole quilt. Typically you make a whole front of the quilt, a whole back of the quilt, and then you put batting in between and then you sew all those layers together to like be the final stitching of, of the piece. But with this, um, I'm going to actually do make basically a bunch of little quilts uh, and then we'll stitch them together with a little with a little binding strip um, when we're done or like you know as we go a little bit so those binding strips you could decide on the color later um, you could do like a neutral for the back um, but yeah so I think that's kind of how we'll be doing this then we can be quilting as we go a little bit and and hopefully that'll get us further along as we go um, but anyway, so this will, that'll be uh, the s next week, and then the week after that will be the embroidery of the month week. So a bunch of embroidery, but we'll be doing some sewing too. And then this is this is our embroidery of the month for this month. It's our cat nap under the jade. And what's going to be fun about this one compared to um, other uh, embroideries that we've done is that this actually has uh, plays with that idea of the different number of strands you know how we've been separating our strands into three strands from the six for this this starts with six so like these little jades up here use all six strands then the other green ones use four and as they get further and further back they use less so all these light green ones only use two all this table just uses two strands and then by the time we get down to the cat and the rug and all this that's just using one strand of of thread and it gives the effect of like distance a little bit, like the things closest to us are, are thicker, whereas the things farthest away are, are thin. So that's kind of fun. It's, that's one way that you can play with different number of threads um, in a piece. And that, that'd be fun to try. We've talked about it a lot and finally did a design based on that. <laughs> All right, so I think we will call it a night there. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll finish up this alligator tomorrow and uh, see what else. We'll see what else is hanging out here. We do have that tatting to do yet. <laughs> but like I said, I do want to actually do quilting related stuff for this, this project um, when we run out of um, or when we get done with these early. Because I suspect we'll get a, a lot of these done you know, on the Thursdays, um, they won't all run all the way to Friday. So theoretically each week we should have like at least one day, uh, to do a little bit of the quilt process. So we will get into that. Yes. And Grace says it reminds me of Chad, <laughs> Chad Kitty. Yep. For sure. <laughs> it's definitely model after Chad Kitty. Uh, yep. <laughs> all right, you guys. So I will see y'all tomorrow at, um, 8 30 PM central time. Have a lovely evening. Good night.